I've lived a thousand This is the Happy Jacks RPG Podcast, a roundtable discussion that's a mix of friendship, humor, unbridled enthusiasm, and tabletop RPG topics sent in from around the world. Just for another Hello. Welcome to the Happy Jacks <laughs> RPG Podcast. Season fifteen, season thirty, episode fifteen. Uh, my name is Kimmy. I'm Stork. I'm Adam. We're and, we're over here muttering away. So. I know, talking and chatting. We said we're starting now. We're like, okay, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're nattering away like a bunch of old biddies. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> Friendship, right? Yeah. Uh, so in today's episode, Ken in Ontario asked about getting a group of very different players to find harmony. Mm. Aaron of Portland shares his experience with improv exercises at his gaming table. This is kind of a little bit of a yet, you know, um, actually uh, yeah. from our email a while back. Oh, okay. Um, and Weasel Creature in California brings up Obsidian Portal and getting players to participate in stuff outside of game time. This Weasel is also creature. yeah. No, this is also a long little time bit, listener. Yeah, I know. We love this. Another a little bit of a well, um, actually. Uh, so both yeah. of these are oh. comments on previous things. Oh, did you know there's an actual show on? Uh, uh, I got on the YouTube's. I'm sure it's with the whole geek network called um actually it's a little like jeopardy yes. and it's all nerd trivia and it's hysterical and it's fun and i found myself like binge watching a bunch of them like uh, um, um actually there's yeah. a musical episode oh but, di- oh nice yeah but i was like uh oh this is a show for me yeah but just like jeopardy you have to say um actually yeah and it's like i could yeah. see myself on it and I'm, my problem is i would end up doing the guy from this and um, actually um, actually <laughs> every time right. yep every time yeah all right. If you'd like to contribute a question or topic to the show, email us at happyjacksrpg at gmail.com. That's happyjacksrpg at gmail.com. And we could use some emails. I'm not going to lie. Mm. We got a little bit, but we could always use some more. Otherwise, I'll just natter on and talk about stuff. And, you know, you don't want that. Yeah. They, you don't. they do. They, they do. <laughs> right. It gives them something to um actually about. Right. <laughs> I think Stork and I together could ramble for about five hours before we even needed a breather. Right? Yeah. I've seen it. Yes. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Accurate. All right. Uh, and Happy Jack's community updates. JackerCon is happening right now. Right like, now? Right now. Right like, now. As we speak. Right now. So, um, big success. Like 17 games were registered for the weekend. Holy smokes, it's more than our normal big convention. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. it's great. Not all of them got filled, but they're still open. If you're listening to this live or if I get this processed soon enough, you could go check it out. Love that. Yeah, happyjacks.org slash JC. Um, I really, really want to give a huge thanks to the incredible team that put this on. This is a... Yeah, clap. This is a fan-run online convention. Um, we we give it publicity. We mention it a lot. And a couple of us are running games and things, but it's not run by the hosts. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Flying Jackalope, Joe Gunn, DT Pints, Karaku, and Michael for all your hard work getting the Discord set up, making yeah. sure the bots were working. Um, thank you, especially Flying Jackalope, for answering all my annoying questions about the bots and how they work and things. I always, <laughs> always appreciate all of you. And this all started with DT Pines all those yeah. years ago. Yeah. Who you, right. who GM, or who you were in a game with? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Sure. Yes, I was in a game with DT Pines. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. It's awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. A, a game which was a masks game run by Micah, mm-hmm. um, also AKA Call Me North, and you can play masks with Micah. In JackerCon. There you so, go. Yeah. I, is she's running a game? Yes. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think twice, actually. So, yeah. And lots of people. And you can get to play with us hosts, which, you know, we're delightful, damn it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know the GMs are good because they've been listening to us for years. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. My, my daughter was in your mask game. Yes, and, that's right. And yeah. she would yeah. come and regale us with stories yeah. of, of how great. Michael yeah. was as a GM and yeah. all of the great oh, yeah. stuff going on. And she's really good. Yeah. I, I, if I didn't yeah. realize she was running a game, oh, yeah. I might actually yeah. have to join it. I know. I think there's a Sunday afternoon one, but yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's openings in that one, but there might be. Yeah. Yeah. Check it yeah. out. Yeah. All right. Um, let's start with the mail. Yeah. Mail time. Let me read the first one. Sure. Oh, sure. Okay. Kimmy can. 
Me? Yeah. Okay. No, you can't. No, I can't. No, because of it's got oh, it's got pro-Kimi propaganda at the end. Oh, oh okay. All right. Okay. That's very nice. Okay. Mm, okay. We'll see if I can read the pro-Kimi propaganda. Um, I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, hi, all. I've got a bit of a horror story and a bit of a what the heck do I do about this later today. I'm running a Savage Worlds group with four players ranging in age from late 20s to early 40s. They run the full gamut from A, the power gamer, to B, the silent observer, C, the oddball, always plays the off-kilter character but plays them well, and finally D, the loud and dominant. I want to stress that these people are all my friends. We socialize outside the games and get along very well. However, Player D always tended to be in charge and the main force of the player group. He did most of the in-character interactions with NPCs and most of the talking at the table. Despite that, it worked smoothly because the power gamer and especially the observer didn't talk much, but it all, so it all seemed to be in balance. I did make an effort to draw out the quiet players to the extent of what seemed to be their comfort levels, so I thought it was going well. This went along smoothly until confronting a pulp mummy, which was invulnerable until the MacGuffin was put into the MacGuffin slot. Before that happened, Player D did an insane attack in which the damaged dice exploded multiple times doing huge amounts of harm that had no effect. Oh, that's frustrating. Oh, <laughs> yeah. right? Because, hey, you didn't uh, get the MacGuffin in the yeah. MacGuffin slot. Yeah. Uh, the game broke down then, D complaining about how impossible it was and how he might as well just lie down and die, etc. I was surprised by this, assuming he was having a bad day and was just set off by the bad luck. But I think we've all and I think we've all had those days. But the problem started getting more consistent after that. That player was a regular GM for paid Pathfinder and D&D games. So I began to think that it was a control issue, that he had trouble with having things out of his control. And of course, Savage Worlds is not a good game for players who want lots of control, what with the exploding dice. Very true. Uh, that's my added. <laughs> I finally had to have a talk with him one-on-one -on -one away from the table. Prior to this, there was an issue with a Weird War II game where his melee buffed character came up against an invulnerable werewolf. He had no silver weapons, but the party knew there was silver in the end they were defending. I had to stop the game because I had run out of patience. So after I talked, he accepted that it could be a control issue and that sometimes there will be situations that he can't just stab away. Things settled after that. Then finally, Player D agreed to run a uh, Star Wars or Savage Worlds. Sorry, SW means Savage Worlds. <laughs> Supers game, and I got to play. Player A, the power gamer, min maxed a nearly indestructible super character, pretty uh, much like, breaking the game like system. They do. Right. Every session consisted of two to four rants from our GM, even though player A debuffed his character a couple times and finally said he would make a new character if needed. It didn't help. It didn't help. Because he still was, he can't help it. He's a power gamer. Uh -huh. It still made a really <laughs> right. optimized character. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, that arc ended. I tried to mediate and suggested player A's character got recruited by the high power supergroup that operated in the same city, thus acknowledging player A's amazing character build but getting him out of the campaign with dignity. However, that last session was too much. I called a hiatus until summer. I'm a teacher, so I used the too much work, new puppy, wife working hard, blah, blah, blah excuses. <laughs> I'm hoping that if D is going... Oh, I'm hoping that if D is away from gaming for a bit, he'll have some time for introspection. I don't know if another talk will do any good. It didn't do much more than a short-term Band-Aid fix the first time. So, what do I do? I'm in a small town and there is not much of a pool of players, and honestly, I do like these guys. I don't want to stop playing with them. I just want the games to be fun and stress-free. Any suggestions? Ken. P.S. Player A and B were never much for character development or role playing until I was starting the Weird War II campaign and I decided to use Decima during character design. Woo. What a masterpiece. <laughs> the two quiet players were responsible for developing a huge backstory of a rival company led by an NPC sniper named Fucking Steve. <laughs> it did get a bit silly, but I was so happy that they were all creating that they were still creating a story and background and NPCs, and they were all getting so into it. I let them roll with it. As they were paratroopers invading France on D-Day, I left out the location development, but it was still amazing. I have since used it whenever I could, two more times, with equally awesome results. And when Player D started his Supers campaign, he borrowed it and still came out amazing yet again. Thanks, Kimmy. 
PPS, I'm playing in Southern Ontario, a half hour north of Toronto. Mark your player's map. Oh, yeah. We got to update the map on the, uh, on the website. Yeah. yeah. This is a tricky one. I don't yeah. know. I yeah. feel like I feel like this is like an Ask Amy column, you know, or because or <laughs> this is this has to deal more with per people and personalities than it yeah. does with games, and it's going to be very very hard tricky be, to to make everybody happy because we're not dealing with a game system over player choice issue. We're dealing right. with personality types, especially when you're playing Savage Worlds because Savage Worlds is so unpredictable, very swingy, and very yeah. volatile. Yeah, and it's one second everything seems pretty well balanced and then a couple explosions later and <laughs> boom but, yeah but it, but i i mean again i i see you've got an introvert you've got an extrovert you've also got some age variations between 20 right. and 40 is a big deal so mm -hmm. you've got also got people in different phases of life about you know what their expectations are you've got probably somebody who's OCD who wants to uh, min-max stuff, and you've got somebody who's uh, very much a loud thespian stuff, so an extrovert. So yeah. you've got personalities that are... Either, you guys are all friends, clearly. Yeah. But it's going to be hard to manage all their different expectations. There's a lot going on because the yeah. introvert and the extrovert want two different things out of a game. Right. And yeah. you can't make them both happy. I don't the, know what to do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the the odd, the odd one who plays the oddball off-kilter character, is, is um, you didn't talk about them a lot, but they sound... But when it's an oddball off-kilter character, usually they're really into the role-playing. They're usually into the character stuff. So it sounds like those two, the, the oddball and the, the loud player, really like the, the more... Bombastic, bombastic <laughs> aspects of of gaming, uh, whereas the the power gamer likes the crunchy number stuff and the silent observer. Who knows? But you clearly got those first two involved in the decima stuff. So maybe maybe what's needed here is a switch up of gaming and maybe try a couple of story games in between and. See if you can, A, bring out some more of the personality and characters of those uh, those two quieter players while giving the louder player and the oddball character still plenty to play around with. So uh, I'd suggest something like, like A Quiet Year uh, and um, what's that other one that I'm thinking of? Oh, I... Uh, uh, it's by Avery, um, but, but yeah. even something like masks. <laughs> yeah, so. even masks. Yeah, yeah. No, um, the Quiet Year is by Avery. Uh, oh yeah, she, uh, yeah. We, there's another one that she did with the, uh, the. It's like the queer circus <laughs> comes oh, to I don't town. Know. I, uh, oh, I'm, I'm blanking oh. on the name, but yeah. but anyway. Um, also for the yeah. queen. Oh, for the queen would be a great one. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, doing things like masks or uh, demigods is another really good one uh, for this, like, that give you good background questions to ask and build a story together. And just focus a little more time on uh, letting everybody be involved with putting together stakes for the setting might help everyone buy in a little bit more, maybe. I was going to suggest that as well, but my... My story of choice would be a really good long mystery mm -hmm. where there's a lot of investigating. There's a lot of not necessarily stabby, stabby, killy, killy stuff, but everybody sits, everybody sits down every, that, that way. Everybody has a chance to think things through. Yeah. So, the, so the guy who likes to talk to NPCs can go and interrogate people. And the person that likes to think about things and is quiet can sit around and, and decipher runes or, or just think about stuff. And, hey, guys, did you guys think about the, the butler did it? Right. Or, or, or whatever it is. <laughs> Um, it would be more story driven. It'll be less stabby stabby, but everybody's going to be contributing intellectually and into the story by trying to figure out. And I know that like mm -hmm. uh, with the Masks of the Narl Hotep, which is this really huge, long Cthulhu campaign you're on trains and different continents might be something to mm -hmm. look into. I think it would be a, a sort of a palate cleanser, if nothing else. It's still a game. There's still some randomizers. There's still stuff involved. And yet it's a really complicated murder on the Orient Express, spanning continents kind of traveling thing. I th I think that that might be a way for the, everybody to contribute without worrying about um, if they're winning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think also 
kind of stepping back from specific in-game suggestions, mm -hmm. which are great, mm -hmm. you have to break this up a little bit because as someone who works with large groups of people on the regular, like if it's not Happy Jacks that I'm organizing, it's my classroom, you can't think of them as a collective mm -hmm. when you're thinking about troubleshooting and what is going to make people have fun or get along with other people um, or, or who has problems. You have to think of them as individuals. So it's interesting in your email, I'm looking at it, a lot of your complaints have to do with player D, who's not the power gamer. They're just yeah. the aggressive loud one. And then the thing that really puts you over the top was a thing with player D, who is a totally different person than all the things that got you frustrated in the first part of your email. And this, it's much harder to do this and it takes a lot of practice, but you have to think of these as two separate issues, mm -hmm. is working with player A, who's aggressive and taking charge, and the techniques and things you're going to use for that person are going to be very different than the person who just makes mechanically a wild character because honestly i think the wild character is a lot easier to deal with <laughs> yeah. you just uh pick a system that's a little more balanced or talk to them and be like okay this is a little too powerful bring yeah. it back a bit right you yeah. know you cannot take 15 disadvantages so that you can like have this other thing you cannot like no sense of smell and all the ones right. you used to take in the point by systems that you're like, this will never matter. Right. I always go back to Darth's and droids. <laughs> uh, if anybody knows that it's, but it's basically uh, a D and D group, but they're, they're creating a new story and it's essentially the star Wars prequels. Mm -hmm. And so it's a comic strip using images from the star Wars prequels, but it's the dialogue of the people playing this story as their D and D game, uh, their fantasy sci-fi fantasy D and D game. And uh, one of the, main characters is r2d2 who is min maxed and has all these ridiculous skills <laughs> but is mute is short is, you know has no hands uh you know like all of these disadvantages and it's yeah yeah so yeah. i think for player d specifically you've had the conversation it is on you as the gm to be more aggressive with your spotlight power Think of yourself as the person directing the camera in like a movie shoot or something. And when mm -hmm. some you get to a moment, look at player B and be like, this is happening. What do you do, player B? Yeah. And you toss the camera focus on that person before player D has a chance to take over the situation. Yeah. It also... Go ahead. No, but uh, I, I was just going to say, I think you're, that's a really good point. I think that instinct is to let people just sort of play at the level that they want. And, it, and while that is very comforting to some people, it does lead to domination by certain people. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the GM, you can really take that and, and pivot it and, and, uh, and, give them a chance to to be involved but you also had to be aware again like you said with different personalities player b may not want to speak up more yeah and so you have to understand they're that. actually quite happy like being an right. introvert it's like having an introverted child it's like yeah you know I, my worst nightmare is if you ask me to do something in the game i'm very happy <laughs> just watching no no this is fun for me yeah. don't don't try to help right. it's not broken yeah so I have to say, first of all, you, you're doing an amazing job at navigating through this. You it sounds like you, yeah. you, you had conversations, mm -hmm. you have identified problems, you, you had grown-up mm -hmm. conversations, which aren't always easy to do, right. and you've been working through this. So I have to really laud you, first of all, for your uh, intuition. You, you noticed when something was wrong and stopped a game, yeah. which is already uh, uh, light years beyond most of us doing. Yeah. I mean, most of the time we get so caught up in the game, we don't realize there was anything wrong, and you caught it immediately. I also noticed, as Kimmy was pointing out, that it seems like most of this problem seems to be player D. Yeah. Even you identified that when you said, I'm hoping that player D, after he takes a, a, a break. Yeah. I, I, I'm I not going to say ban player D, because you guys are all friends and everything, but clearly the, he's having some problems that's sort of been, because everything seems to be him. Even when he was running the game, it was, and then he and, he and A, the power gamer, were clashing. 
So it seems like it stems mostly from one person. And again, I'm not saying that this is a game system problem. This is a personality problem. Yeah. And perhaps I think your solution may actually bear fruit, which is maybe he just needs to take a break. Right. Yeah. And decompress and remember why he does this anymore. And maybe he's burned out. And maybe that's that because that does happen where it's like, guys, this isn't fun anymore. I need to just yeah. stop. The, the other thing I would ask is, do you guys hang out ever without gaming? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. Because I think th that could be a real important thing here is get the group together, but but don't game uh, or if you do uh, like get together and play a board game or, you know, or just, um, you know, just sit around and uh, and talk about your lives, uh, because some, sometimes when we get so caught up in how the dynamics of the game are going, we forget that we're human beings and we're hopefully friends who are doing this to get together and have fun together. Yeah. And so refocusing the group on that could really help bring this person back into a, a sense of it doesn't matter what happens in the game because what really matters is that I'm hanging out with my friends and we're having a good time. And that's way more important than when your roles hit. Well said. Mm -hmm. I think that that is the crux of the biscuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got a crux of the biscuit for some of the season. <laughs> crux well of the biscuit. Because it's uh, <laughs> it is. This is um, this is a personality and friendship thing. Yeah. I mean, and it sounds like you know you were mediating and stuff, trying to basically stop a fight amongst friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. It's awful. And I think your advice is really good. You guys remember why you're friends. Mm -hmm. Hang yeah. out at a barbecue and say we're not talking about gaming. We're going to talk about right. yeah. other stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That even if you only became friends because of gaming. Yeah. You know, like, like a lot of the people I know through Happy Jacks is because I started gaming with all of you. But we we had many times during the last couple of years where we'd come over to Kimmy's on Saturday night and ostensibly to play a game. Uh, and we would just sit around and spend two or three hours just chatting and catching up with each other. And I, I didn't mind that we only played for like an hour sometimes. <laughs> You know? That's the way Bobby that. rehearsals if go. That, right, yeah. <laughs> so Joey has come back like, uh, oh, yeah. We're never going to get any of the music memorized. We get there yeah. and we talk for an hour and a half and nobody does anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Sounds yeah. like a gaming group. It's also like <laughs> part of it. It's, yeah. you know, that human connection being yeah. with the other people for sure. Um, I think the only other thing I might suggest is maybe trying something like Stars and Wishes at the end of yeah. your game. Oh, yeah. Um, because that will tell you there's roses and thorns and stars and wishes. I prefer stars and wishes. Um, we've talked about it before. Short thing at the end of a campaign or at the end of a session, GM asked, okay, what are your stars and wishes? Stars are the things that the players really loved that happened that session. And wishes are things that they wish we'd get more of or might happen next session. So it can be as simple as, wow, my character really wishes they'd get a new pretty outfit. Like, <laughs> Whatever it is, or they wish they'd find their long lost child. It can be, it can be deep. I wish the power gamer would stop min maxing all the <laughs> characters so we could all have fun. Well, th that's sort of what it is. That it, a like, thorn? <laughs> <laughs> but it gives them a moment where they all get to kind of share how they're feeling. It can be something like, "Oh, I wish we'd have less combat," yeah. or like, "I wish I'd get to talk a little bit more," or "I wish I'd be able to try this power I haven't used," yeah. which then without you really having to do anything as the GM communicates to everyone else at the table, how they're right. feeling about the game at that point. And hopefully like people would pick up, Oh, I, I, I took all the attention this time, or I made all the big decisions. I didn't let them. So there's a lot of communication that can happen through that mechanic without it being explicitly like you are taking all the time and I'm annoyed, <laughs> right? you know? So like, maybe try something like that. If, Nothing else, it, as the GM, it will give you an idea of what p people want more of in your game and what they want less of. Yeah. And maybe they're more aligned in what they want than you realize. That's usually what I find. Even when I'm, I know it's wild, but when you watch Happy Jack's games, it seems very like, oh, this they're so in harmony. They're not. <laughs> they're, they're not. They're very carefully cast. And it's like, okay, I'm going to put one thespian in this game and one min maxer and you know so you, you have to mix it up but there's also a lot of understanding of and owning of what type of player each of us is and Absolutely. a lot of communication that happens on camera and off because you as the gm can be like hey player d you took you know the lead last 
last uh, last scene. So maybe does anybody else have an idea? Like you totally can say that and you don't come off as a dick. I mean, right. as long as you say it right, they'll, they'll be like, God player D, you always go bossy. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah. And you can also, um, uh, sometimes you can make the person that seems to be causing problems an ally and get them focused on helping with the others. Like, yep. you know, and kind of talk to them and say, hey, I think that player B, for example, would really like to talk more and would like to come out of their shell more. Um, can you help me it's a great uh, idea. Get, take a step back sometimes or like drag them along with you when you're going to go talk to the shopkeeper? Yeah. Next time you're going to go to make uh, persuade the guard to let you into town, yeah. bring them with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a and teaching it, moment. Oh, yeah. 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 I use that in teaching all the time. Uh huh. The bossy know it all kid you know what i would love if you would be my special helper with this thing over yes. here and it always works and they feel good and everyone else feels better and every feel it's great it's great as the know-it-all child <laughs> um, actually, i loved that <laughs> you didn't realize you oh. were being manipulated oh no it no, didn't matter it did not matter <laughs> like i get to be the special helper i'm the special helper everybody i'm helping yeah, <laughs> yeah. Teachers love it too because oh, yeah. now they oh, don't yeah. have to collate anymore. You yeah. get you get to clean the erasers. I do. Yeah, yeah. That's a, I don't ever have to clean erasers ever again. <laughs> you guys still have erasers no. on the, for the chalkboards? No. Do you still have chalkboards? No. It's whiteboards or is it all digital? Yeah. I have yeah. I have whiteboards, yeah. but I don't. I use them for math, but most of it, a lot of it's digital now, yeah. or in like workbooks and stuff. Ah, oh, so cool. Uh, I'm just old, I I guess. Oh. I don't think I've had ever. They like, still have workhouses, right? You know, where, where small children go to work. The gruel for, for lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah gruel. They still have that, right? I mean, it hasn't gone completely. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No. No. Right. I mean, and they, they kids call don't, it pizza, but it's yeah. gruel. There's, yeah. Kids <laughs> don't want to work for these wages anymore. But, right. You know, they're just yeah. lazy. Now. They're still, okay. I just need to make sure that not everything's, I mean, there's still, you know, punishment. Kids, students just disappear, right? They go into the. Right. That that's still that's still a thing, yeah. right? And we're not yeah. too out of touch, yeah. right? <laughs> sorry. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am a father. It's okay. I'm yeah. just kidding around. Yeah. Kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ken. That's a very thought provoking yeah. Yeah. email. And please write back to let us know like how things are going. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's something that we overlook, which is when we get in these games. And as you succinctly said, it's like there's a lot of personalities. Yeah. And sometimes. They don't all get along. Right. Very and I, true. Yeah. And I want to say, like, when people are streaming and things like that, a lot of times we get this idea that everyone's perfect and everyone gets along. Uh, us and every other streaming group that I know of, <laughs> I know a lot of them, there's always drama. Like, oh, yeah. you may not see it when you're watching, but all of them have drama sometimes. We've had, yeah. we've had campaigns that hit drama that we're yep. like okay we're gonna stop this campaign now <laughs> and oh scheduling conflict everybody yeah <laughs> <laughs> or whatever and or you know player decides hey it's not for them so we swap yeah. them out with somebody else or there's lots of reasons and it happens with every group so you should not yeah. ever feel that you are in any way failing when you get groups of humans together there is innately conflict especially when you're doing an activity that thrives on fictional conflict. Mm -hmm. Inevitably, it kind of mixes all together. You get spillover. You get, yeah. You, yeah. And it, I, I've talked about that numerous times with actors getting so into roles and such. Yeah. Your body doesn't know that that you're pretending to cry. Right. It still thinks so. All of the hormones and everything are pumping through your system. And in many ways, when you're role playing, you, you know, you're concentrating on that drama, and it you, just everybody's nerves are a little more raw when you mm -hmm. when you sometimes yeah. when you're gaming. Which you it seems like you're aware of because you did mention that stuff, but it's yeah. it it's, it begs to be repeated, which is you know you got a bunch of personalities together in a room, meeting each week. Ever, eventually, there's a boiling point. Yeah, you know? yeah. right. Even Absolutely. with the best of intentions. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Start. Well do you want to read good the next? Sure. Hi, Jackers. It is I, Aaron of Portland, formerly known as Aaron of Oakland. I grew up in Portland. Oh. I talk about that every time we get an email from Portland. Yeah. Is Future Dreams still a thing? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, my wife and I moved five years ago. I'm a long time listener, but haven't written in a long time. The last email was at my GM success story about 
and and my oh, little pony oh my little pony oh. rpg thank you i ran for my wife and friend which stork was especially tickled by yeah you like that one right, of course <laughs> i my daughters i think were into my little pony at the time which mm. is a decent show and great puns yes and i know you loved it because the laser ponies was directly influenced by my little pony at the time <laughs> well i was like lasers a, an yeah. old school like the Freaking. first my little pony ones which were really yeah. just terrible cartoons yeah. about selling the toys which oh, yeah. i bought copious amounts of <laughs> oh, yeah we were also horse girl for a while when yeah. you were younger. yeah, yeah. So they know they knew the branding it, oh yeah it pretty much ticked all your boxes didn't it yeah. yes <laughs> it, they may still you might still have a box of my little pony somewhere i'm Cannot be confirmed or denied. Uh, I plead the fifth. It may or may not be next to a bunch of She-Ra and Star Wars figurines at my mom's house. Uh, Waiting uh, for the time that my like, daughter can uh -huh. yeah. like, just come with the choice. I literally have like over 400 Star Wars figures. Yeah. It's a lot. Uh, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Well, you have a whole wall so, here. That... Right? Anyway. <laughs> I was it's a good thing you married a geek. He I'm sure he completely understands and probably maybe he wants to see them. Yeah. He doesn't know about them. They're at my mom's house. He does now. <laughs> Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> does hey, he honey. live there now, actually? <laughs> he's not logged into chat right now. Okay. okay. That doesn't mean he's not watching. <laughs> Right now he's what? Getting up. I was just listening to season thirty. But anyway, there's an email I was reading. Oh, right? yeah. Remember that? I, I was just listening to season thirty, episode eleven. I was delighted at a Danish listener's question about improv exercises. But wow, you all really buried the lead in your response. Allow me to pretend to play guest host then for a moment. <laughs> Wow, what a great question. I actually got an idea to try out some pre-game improv exercises for my players a few years ago, so I searched the internet for some simple improv games that would hopefully pull out the creativity and shake the metal cobwebs off. Hoping to encourage a more proactive game pro play style, I used them from time to time when I remembered uh, with different groups and got mostly positive feedback. Flash forward some years, fairly recently, to when I heard about a book published by Evil Hack Games called Improv for Gamers. I was able to buy a used copy online because it was out of print, but around the same time I purchased the copy, I found out they were crowdfunding for a second edition of the book. I can only speak to my experience using the first edition that I have, but wow, it's a game changer. The book has tons of great exercises, but also gives advice on how to introduce improv to players. It explains what skill each game is focusing on honing, how to troubleshoot all of the hiccups that arise with improv, and so much more. I can't recommend the book enough. My current group is playing a Fate RPG, Paranormal Investigators Hunter style campaign. I brought up using improv exercises at the end of the session zero, and everyone decided eh, they'd at least give it a try. Keep in mind, three of the four players have never played with me before, and only one had done pre-game improv before because they played in other games I've run. The group adapted super quickly, and now it's a blast every session. I was careful to be extra encouraging and remind them that they are brave and awesome just for attempting improv, which is actually very key. Yes. Mm -hmm. Improv has a bad reputation, and it, and it is scary. Even for people that do improv, they, it's, there's an adrenaline rush to it. And it, it, yes, you have to make sure that it's safe and people feel safe because it's scary. Mm -hmm. uh, it it also has really helped them adapt to a different play style of narrative slash story focused games like Fate, uh, which only half of them have ever played before and none of them had a lot of experience with. Our last game session, all of the players willingly made detrimental, interesting choices for their characters, Ooh, unprompted yes. by the GM. They embraced the obvious bad consequences and actually cared about what the other player characters were doing when their own characters were removed from the scenes for longish periods. At the session's end, one of my players said, I don't know what it is about this game session, but everything was so cinematic for me. He went on to describe specific details and how the weird and chaotic to navigate stuff I was trying to describe made perfect sense. So. If you haven't tried improv exercises to improve the gear game, I would recommend trying it and trying again because like GMing, it's only going to be perfect. The first, it's, not, it's not going to be perfect the first time. Thanks for letting me share that gang. Now back to you, Aaron in Portland. P.S. Thank you, Aaron in Portland. All right, now back to Stork. Back to you. <laughs> Stork to finish the email. Go. Throwing it back to Stork. Oh, uh, well, the weather today, it's going to be uh, <laughs> a, a balmy 80 degrees. Oh, and then we have a P.S. I know we're going to bring up Monster of the Week. Yeah, of course I'm going to bring up Monster of the Week. In regards to my current campaign, <laughs> I'm not a PBA PB, PBTA See. fan. Um, the playbooks feel too much like classes and brace yourself. It feels too restrictive for my creativity to really run free. But 
Maybe I just haven't had the right GM run it for me. PPS, drink. Huzzah! A drink. Um, yes. I... I don't... I've never heard of this book, and I'm going out to buy it. Yes. Well, this was from an email that we read a few weeks ago, I think, with Jason and Stu and I. Mm. Um, yes. And... I have to admit, like, after reading this kind of reply email, I think that we didn't really recognize the privilege from our gaming group. Happy Jacks was started by a bunch of fair performers. Which, read vaudeville, vaudevillians. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, do, seriously, that's yeah. what we do. It's yeah. vaudeville. Right. We do live shows on a stage with an audience who is constantly interacting with us and expect us to react to them. So it's not like seeing a play. Yeah. It's like being in a eight to 10 hour long improv session, except the small breaks backstage. So I think a lot of us do a lot of these improv things and did a lot of these improv things and are like, oh, and kind of like we just did a second ago, we're so used to playing off each other. We right. can go on and, and now to stork with the weather. And <laughs> we do it so automatically now because we have so many years of practicing at it that the idea of like doing improv for a specific game, I think I wrote it off too quickly mm -hmm. and I didn't recognize how it could help with a lot of groups. Um, and a lot of, a lot of the new Happy Jacks people don't have that performance background. Some of them mm -hmm. do. Joey came in like, hello, <laughs> <laughs> someday I will have my EGOT. It will be fine. Yes. <laughs> um, to be fair, Joey enters every room that way. He does. He does. <laughs> His uh, egot precedes him, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so I think reading this email, I understand now the the value that this book could could give to people who don't have that knowledge and background with theater and specifically yeah. improv too. I was I was in the chat room when you guys were doing this, and I, I I threw in a couple of comments. But one of the things I wanted to reiterate, which is, I don't like improv games. I don't either. I find them. I find them kind of corny. I find them kind of, and I, so I totally get why nobody, somebody wouldn't want to do an improv game before during, I, I, and I'm a, I consider myself like a theater actor. I do this vaudeville group and improv's kind of the game, but I don't like the theater games. I don't, yeah. it, it just rubs me the wrong way. So a book about improving specifically around gaming sounds like a really great solution to that problem so that you're not just playing the tired old games of that you used to do in mm -hmm. theater. This is something else that's different that I think and clearly he says it's improved everybody's game no pun intended so uh because i remember when the email came out it is a little tricky like how do you get people to improv when it's one of the scariest things in the world like yeah. i've said this numerous times the number one fear that people reiterate when they talk to psychologists or anybody is what's your greatest fear is speaking in public and much of what we're doing in this game group is speaking right it, and to people, to other people, even if they're your friends, it's still very intimidating to take a stance, make a point, and talk to them. And not everybody's comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my oh, my immediate reaction, what's your greatest fear? Not being perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> speaking in public. Sorry. Speaking right, in right, public. Right. But no, I think you're right. And um, the game or the book that he's talking about is from Evil Hat. They just crowdfunded. We mentioned this in the last episode. Um, they didn't use Kickstarter. I forget which one they used. They used the board game crowdfunding site for the first time, which was oh. interesting. Um, but I don't, I think, I think the crowdfunding for it has finished, but they're doing like a second edition of it, like an update and clean I'm up. I'm going to buy it. it. It sounds really yeah. interesting. Yeah. I really great. like how they talk about how each specific game can apply and how to ease people into doing improv mm -hmm. games. I think a lot of the reason that a lot of us from theater have like trauma or like just a dislike yeah a dislike yeah. For it. but i feel like a lot of us were thrown into it yeah. with very little just just do something do yeah. anything it's improv feel it. you can't do it wrong yeah. right yeah. and yeah. suddenly you're there yep. with someone who's good at it yep i'm starting to get that, <laughs> oh, that right? annoyed feeling that the minute you brought that up you, you definitely hit a point there i'm like yeah no, i'm mad yeah <laughs> right yeah so i think this i think this book sounds like it has the thing that we all should have had with improv direction and never got 
Mm -hmm. um, and we always just felt like, oh, this yeah. is super awkward. And also and, tended always to be group oriented. So yeah, it's like yeah. everybody's, you know, doing the same. And you're just like, this feels like a cult. And then I'm just going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go to the bathroom and not come back. Or the, or the really annoying thing, if you do enough of it with the same people for long enough, it's like they keep doing the same scenes, but just like a little different. Right. So it's like, OK, we we're going to do this again, you know, next class in four weeks. And then you're like, oh, this is <clears> this <throat> like it's just not. Walmart, it's a soda shop. Oh, okay, this is the same scene. Yeah. <laughs> it's so annoying. I think in a lot of ways, those classroom, theater classroom improv uh, things are to get all of the bad ideas out of your system. <laughs> yes. It's also it's, it's also a, a group trust or a, gr a group building, what do you call it, exercise? Yeah, a group building exercise yeah. or a team building exercise. Where, yeah, right. Because you guys are in, you guys are going to be acting together. It's a way yes. for you all to get together and to get to know each other and relax around each other and, you know, and not and be, not being afraid to fail, not being afraid to look stupid. Right. Because yeah. that's what actors, actors put themselves on the line to be, to be look stupid all the time yeah it's it's one of the things people don't understand is like when you see an actor misbehaving it's because they've put themselves out there and are getting ridiculed and it's hard i mean mm -hmm. you get on stage and you and you're acting up a storm or doing what you think is really great and you're in the middle of a scene and you're trying to cry or you are crying and you hear someone laughing and you're like i'm completely humiliated now yeah i don't know what yeah. to do i don't know how to handle this and you have to keep going right you have to yeah, keep going you have or, to. Yeah. or you put your trust in a director and then when you yeah. see the film you're like what have you done to me <laughs> i'm never working again you yeah. douchebag what it's what is that so there's a lot of trust that actors have and they get it, it's, the, it's hard yeah, yeah. The, so, something i think you can take away from that even not being uh, for, uh, you know, from a performance uh, circle uh, is get get everybody OK with looking stupid and and just throwing out ideas and seeing what you like. And that's why I, I like some of the things like for the queen. Uh, I'm actually not going to bring up monster of the week because you're on this particular issue. You're right. But it's still an awesome game. But for the queen is one of those games where you you're just answering a prompt and it is very improvisational and there is no wrong answer. So it's a really great exercise to just kind of get everybody at the table used to saying, oh, that's what just developed in the story. I'm going to build on that. Yeah. What's my part in that next? And I, I think it's a really good uh, a really good game for helping people feel that um, in small so, amounts yeah. Yeah. because yeah. I find it exhausting sometimes to have to make every decision. And it becomes it, after a while, yeah. you're like, I really just wanted to drink some beer and hit some stuff. Right. Yeah. And uh, this is exhausting. I, the moral complications of yeah. having to just, just get into the city is, uh, can I, can I hit something now? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot to be said for the fact that there just like, you know, infinite diversity and infinite combinations live long and prosper uh it's important to have diversity in the gaming that you do yeah. it, it, when you play the same type of game over and over you're going to start having expectations that every game is going to be that way and it having some other types of games sprinkled in there can really help add more to the games that you're doing yeah um, and the, the one other thing I wanted to say real quick is that this is very similar to what we were talking about, I think, last week or week before, about uh, expecting that the people that you see on streaming games and the games that you see on streaming games are how it's supposed to be. It's not. And it, even Happy Jacks, which we kind of pride ourselves on being more relaxed and, new, and you know, about everything and, and nothing's pre-planned there is still a lot of we know each other we game together regularly we have a lot of the same ideals we uh, you know so don't expect that just because you see us with good chemistry or see people on other streaming ips with good chemistry don't think that that just happens because you know because you want it to you have to work at it mm -hmm. and and every group has to work at it and the people you see on streams are generally just working more regularly on it.
And again, Kimmy's very careful of putting personality types together. Yeah. I know there's people out there that don't want to game with me ever again, which is fine. <laughs> I, and, I, and I'm not hurt by that. I yeah. get it. I'm not for everyone. And, yeah. and Kimmy's very careful. I plead sure the that. fifth. I'm not going to say. <laughs> But that's, but again, yeah. but that's what gaming groups are like. You know, the people that don't like, I, I can't game with that guy. I don't want to game with, yeah. I don't want to play it again. That's just what happens. Yeah. And you may actually be okay with these other parties. Just, I can't, I can't game with right. the, that min maxer. We have a min maxer friend and I'm like, I can't game with them. Yeah. I like them as a friend. <laughs> I can't game with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we have at this point, like 35 to 40 people who mm -hmm. are active and looking in, like an open to playing games with us and stuff and are all in the the slack so yeah when you have that many people they're going to be personality conflict right. conflicts no matter what yeah yeah um and also just uh you can get this game it's for pre-order the book um, the improv for gamers book the second edition is on pre-order if you go to evil hat um, dot com and then do a search for improv for gamers uh, it's there um and i guess they did the the crowdfunding on game found game found yes okay. which is another crowdfunding site um it's sort of been in kickstarter shadow they mo do primarily board games mm. but i know as people are less happy with kickstarter i know yeah. people have been kind of experimenting with that one so i'm interested to see how that went with them uh, also, but yes yeah also a little plug uh if if you can ask your local bookstore or your local gaming store to order it for you so that you're supporting small businesses as well yeah no. perfect cool all right last email slancha kimmy and the jack and apes i have response i have a response to a recent episode which leads to a related question Season 30, episode 12, a question was posed regarding note-taking and organization, and the host brought up a variety of options, including Google Docs, making a wiki, OneNote, etc. The first thing that popped in my mind was Obsidian Portal, and I was surprised it wasn't mentioned. But not to have my foot in my mouth too much, it's a good thing I kept listening as I typed in this email because Nick did mention it near the end. I think Obsidian mm -hmm. Portal is pretty slick and you can have a wiki section complete with hyperlinks and you can have notes mm -hmm. and only certain members that only certain members can access. There can be a section that only certain play uh, players can access so that they can put info on there for their characters and they even have notes that only the GM can see. The downside of not just Obsidian Portal, but any online tool from Facebook groups to even group text is player usage. This leads to my question. Any tool I've used that's meant for a group to take part in tends to fail because there's usually only half the group that accesses it regularly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips on getting players more active online away from the table tools or, or away from the table tools or, and this is probably the case, so we just resign ourselves to the fact that some people just won't do anything game related once they've left the table. Keep on rocking the docking. Weasel creature in LBC. <laughs> weasel creature on the forums, weasel, cre weasel creature on Discord, weasel creature on Twitter, weasel creature. Oh, you get the idea. <laughs> Yeah, your chain's only as strong as its uh, weakest link. So, you know, <laughs> if everybody does the homework and one person doesn't, then everybody's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stu did use uh, Obsidian Portal for his Eldemy game. Yeah. And, mm. and I checked it out regularly. But again, the GM needs to update it too and then needs to let you know they've updated it. And that's the trick, which is the GM needs to say, hey, I added some cool stuff to the Obsidian Portal. You guys might want to check it out. Not now, because we're gaming. So yeah. you'll have to check it out later. But that's <laughs> that way they're like, well, what am I missed? What, huh? What happened? I, I hesitate for Obsidian Portal. I, I know we did mention it. It wasn't the first thing I suggested, best, just because it's a little more on the expensive side of mm. tools. Um, I prefer Google Docs because it's free. It's not as like fancy or slick. Um, but generally, like you said, not everybody access, accesses that part, part anyway. Yeah. So if you're going to do a thing that's only for some of the people, don't pay very much <laughs> there is that and google works yeah. for everybody and yeah it's if you don't need all the bells and whistles you're just trying to document stuff yeah, yeah and google right. you can do a lot with it yeah, yeah. i also personally okay. haven't really used obsidian portal from the gm side like you said Stu had one for a while and i've had other games where people put stuff a lot of times i've seen with that and everything else it's like everybody does a bunch of it at the beginning of the campaign including the gm yeah 
And then it kind of tapers off and then you'd look and like, oh, we haven't updated it in a few weeks. And then nobody wants yeah. to because they all feel bad. So then it's like two months and nobody's yeah. used it. <laughs> so if you're going to go ahead and follow that normal pattern, I think most gaming groups follow, don't pay for it. <laughs> don't don't get an expensive thing that you're not going to regularly Sound use. Sound advice. Yeah, that's true. And then the thing, <laughs> it it does basically mean homework. It's yeah. I mean, as a musician, after I leave the group, I have to go home and look at lyrics and stuff. Anyway, there's a certain amount of stuff. It's not just like we just do it at rehearsal. And so I'm kind of yeah. used to working outside of the regularly scheduled rehearsals and shows and stuff because, you know, you need to do the work so that when you actually show up to rehearsal, it's productive. But that's not everybody. And I get that. Mm -hmm. And the only other answer to that is to say, hey, I posted new lyrics. Stork, you have new <laughs> lyrics that are on the Obsidian portal. So you probably might want to know them by the next show. Like, oh god maybe i gotta go look at that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think i i don't use a lot of these tools uh either gming or as a player uh, it, there is there has been in the past times when i've had gms that will do this and they uh post things and there's a lot of sort of offline interaction and i really love it sometimes but if it's if it's very imbalanced it can end up feeling very overwhelming for those who have limited time what yeah. do you mean what do you mean by that i'm not sure um, what you mean uh, what i mean is um for example uh, this just happened like a couple of days ago uh, we started talking in a game that i'm uh in prep for we started talking about the name of our ship and uh and it, it came up and i threw out a couple of ideas tell and, me venus was one of them it was not, <laughs> no. um, but it should be, uh, but it's Star Wars, so Venus wouldn't exist. But, but uh, Falcons do. Yes, sure. <laughs> One of them's a Millennium Falcon. You know, right. so we, I, I posted some ideas and it, and then I came back about, uh, you know, about an hour later and there were like 17 replies. Oof. And uh, And when I saw that, uh, like I didn't have time at that point to like go through all of them and then I had to start work and by the time I got home from work there's like 30 more replies and so for somebody who can't be involved in the conversation as it's happening uh, and this is for things like slack and discord etc it can be very daunting and and you feel like well okay I've already so much of this has passed me by yeah and there's also not always a lot of uh of reward for the players uh to to participate in that in the sense that uh and anybody reads uh the book called reality is broken uh it's about gamifying life um yeah but uh no, i'm gonna put that on the reading list oh my god for gamers it's really cool yeah reality is broken it's uh is the title of the book and it's basically about how we can use concepts uh, from gaming, specifically video games, uh, to learn how to feel more reward in our personal lives, yeah. essentially. Really fascinating book. But So I basically yeah. just, my job is farming. Uh -huh. I'm just basically yeah. just farming for gold so yeah. that I can upgrade my life. Yes. Said it. Yeah. Said it. <laughs> right? But then, I'm, then and I'm, then oh, yeah. even worse, we log into video games to do it right, there too. Right. Oh, oh my god! Right. right, I gotta, I gotta go stand in the world frozen waste and kill more polar bears so yeah. I can get a couple more yeah. pelts to make my. Oh. Yeah. oh my god! The I was playing. Maybe I don't need this game. It's already. Depressing. I was playing City Skylines <laughs> for like four hours yesterday while I was watch or Thursday night while I was watching the hearings. Uh, that was yesterday. Oh my god! And um and after about four hours of working on my city, my cat jumped onto my computer and turned off, uh, yeah, force quit the whole computer, lost everything I had done. Oh, no. I was so frustrated. I just started a new game. Oh. I, and, you know, but that's, uh, but the point is, when you're, when you're playing games uh, of whatever type, one of the things that happens is this uh, sense that the, the author of this book refers to as Fiero, which is uh, it's it's kind of that sense of like, oh, my God, I did it accomplishment 
that you get from accomplishing things in games. And and, and, and a lot of the book is about learning how to incorporate that idea into your whole life. Point is, um, uh, when you're... Um, uh, wait, sorry. Okay, I lost my point because I had so many things to say. Um, with, oh, yeah. So so with the with those kinds of like uh, interactive tool off, uh, you know, away from table tools, if you're not feeling that kind of reward from it, then you're not going to want to be as engaged. Yes. You know, so when when somebody when I post my character diary and nobody reads it and nobody you know nobody uses that include whether it's the gm or another player nobody does anything to help work that into the next game session it feels like oh i'm just speaking into the void yeah so it's, it's a waste of time yeah exactly so if you don't have that regular interaction coming back into the game it's really hard to keep that up. Yeah, at best it's a waste of time. At worst, you're not being validated and you don't think right. anybody likes you because they're not yeah. thinking any of the material you have. And now you're right. really, now you don't want to play anymore and you've talked yourself into this whole scenario all yeah. because you had to post something online. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think yeah. if you're going to do it, um, you need to have some sort of mechanic for how it ties into the game. Yeah. yeah. I know a lot of d d it's like, okay, you get an inspiration if you do your thing. Right. That kind of feels like giving a dog a treat for sitting <laughs> and it doesn't really like incorporate it as yeah. much. I, I would love to make it more complex. Like, hey, okay. The next game session, everyone needs to read another character's diary and find a way to pull that into the story. Yeah. And if we all do that, I'll give everybody this much XP. Mm -hmm. um, it's very teacher oriented because it's like a communal prize so everybody gets it and it's a thing you all work at together to yeah. build the community and validate the the diaries my, that everybody my wrote. hackles raise when i hear i have to i need to do something i know that, yeah that can be a problem too if people feel like it's oh i have to now now it feels like homework instead of like how dare yeah. you tell me how to play the yeah. game that I'm playing or my character? Yeah. How yeah. dare you tell me, you know, even if it is for the best of intentions, you might need to find a better word than need. Well, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. But I, I understand your point. It, and right. it's, it's it, again, that's, it speaks to what he's saying here, which is how do you get people to read this stuff? Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it is a little tricky and it's just human nature. You know, some people are really curious and sometimes you just get burned out. Like, and, and your point when we first started was spot on, which is Stu, had spent time in the first couple of sessions he was updating it and then it just stopped yeah and yeah. so there was no need to keep up on it so sometimes think, these things are just self-ending on their own there's is like uh -huh. it, there's no and, and it's not really a problem everybody gets out of it what they needed right. to and then they don't go back to it if you're having a real long-term campaign like a DD thing that you're expecting the last two or more years mm -hmm. i think they can be great especially for you as the gm to kind of track everything again i think there's free options that are just as effective <laughs> if not as fancy um but really be honest with your players and have that and let them be honest with you I yeah. am a people pleaser. If you say, hey, I'd love for you to write a character diary every week, I will be like, absolutely. <laughs> and then look at my life and the five minutes I get to sleep, you know, and all these things. It's like I will then try and and use those five minutes for that. That's not you're not going to get a good diary out of me. Yeah. You're not going it, it, to. It's just not good. Yeah. So, like, be realistic about your expectations use it as a tool for yourself as the gm and if people want to engage great there have been some games where i really felt inspired yeah. um like the uh jibs game the x oh gene x gene x yeah. yes mm -hmm. like not x-men it's not yeah. x-men what was it <laughs> like we all got super into that we yeah. all wrote a bunch of fanfic about it and like off screen like backstory stuff and posted it on the old forums yeah and that just happened to be how that game went it wasn't right. expected or asked of it and it, i don't it couldn't have happened every week yeah. at all but just certain moments you're like oh we're we're inspired to do this yeah yeah so that was cool because it was uh, just spontaneous yeah. and inspired. 
it wasn't like you said homework mm -hmm. well and again some people some gms have different styles i know some gms that after a game do a whole post game write up and they could post that there's yeah. gms that that make maps and stuff during their downtime and those mm -hmm. go up there's uh uh, like Bill is very good at coming up with visual references yeah, and stuff, yeah. and oftentimes it's exciting to see what doing. Oh, I got I yeah. stayed up last night and came up with this cinematic, and so, or or he'll show up with character portraits of you yeah. or, or inspiration mm -hmm. stuff, and it's yeah. so if you have a real proactive GM that's constantly updating the Obsidian Portal, then you really want to see what, what yeah. what's going on. Um, and then if, if like, again, if depending on your play style, if you have players that are up to, or keeping notes on the Obsidian Portal or on Google Docs or whatever it is, mm -hmm. but I, some games don't do that. Some yeah, some players right. don't do that. Most of our games, we just have Sam take incredible notes and she reads them at the beginning and then it's awesome. <laughs> For and some so we, of the games. So we don't need a yeah. portal because we have Sam and she like, <laughs> right? takes the best notes ever. It's and amazing. then the games without Sam are like, They're terrible. Uh, They're terrible. I None of us know what's going on. Yeah. Pooja. Pooja also Pooja. Yeah. very good yeah. note taker. Yes. I just have to say. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, I think... You know, there there is a lot to be said for these kinds of things, and they can add a lot for the people who get something out of it and the people who enjoy it. But I would hesitate to make it something that felt required for the people who don't tend to get anything out of it. So it's really one of those things you got to get that buy in from each other. And I think the best way to go about this is to talk to people up front and say, I'm interested in doing this aspect uh or this thing for our game if i did it would is this something you would participate in is this something you want to participate in but you be honest and won't have time or is this something you know you're not interested in at all uh you know uh, is this something you're going to post every day so maybe we give you some extra assignments you know i think those kinds of uh, conversations would be really good to have up front. So every, you know who, what people are ready for. Before you give your credit card information to any companies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. cheap, I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's like... Well, we had, uh, during uh, the pandemic, uh, and uh, we, uh, several of us were playing a Star Wars, uh, or sorry, uh, Star Trek uh, Adventures game uh, that I was running for Joey and Bill and uh, El Bill's wife, Elspeth, Elspeth, and Kate and Curdy Potts. And we, we just did a Google Doc, and we just started, basically, we sort of put it together like a show Bible. It's just got, like, here's the setup. Here's each of the main characters. Here's each of the NPCs. And, you know, and Bill started doing uh, um, a Photoshop uh, yeah, of, of characters in, so in uniform. It was awesome. <laughs> oh my God, we got so excited. And uh, and then, you know, and Bill would just fill out more and more information. And we'd put, uh, we started putting um, uh, recaps in there. And, and so we kind of kept this group diary and it it was a lot of fun that's when he first did the 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 cinematics that he's yeah. now doing which is <laughs> we flipped out and we insisted on watching it every single game session every single one mm -hmm. it's uh, cool yeah. Yeah. i yeah. yeah actually we talked yeah. um we talked about google docs in the last episode where this kind yeah. of originated from and yeah like with the like search function mm -hmm. and with now the outline function that google docs has there's there's, it does everything like it's yeah. so easy to find information and it's free. like yeah super yeah and it's free yeah it works on almost everything. and super easy to share with everyone collaborative yeah. like everybody can just type on it together yeah, yeah. everybody it, multiple hey, people making notes at that's the some delicious kool-aid you got over there i <laughs> know sharing it with everybody i have to say that and like i'm not getting paid by google but i mean <laughs> if google wants to pay me fine <laughs> honestly like i i have good results with google products yeah. i really do and i know they have all my information and it's like i don't care at this point i'm too tired to like worry about who has my information because everybody does like yeah. i might as well let google have more of it because the pornhub has all my information right. too so <laughs> right yeah. Well, yeah. if you have the, your email through <laughs> yeah. there like typing up your yeah. notes on a doc right. is not giving them other information anything that they don't already have yeah yeah so, yeah yeah but i i just uh, i think these are wonderful things for people who like that. that and in, into them and yeah. 
most of the time you're going to have somebody who is and it's great uh, yeah. but don't try to force it yeah. i don't think you'll have good results no. yeah next uh invest a deep investigative game i'm going to make sure i double check those docs all the time and especially yeah. if you have a gm that adds stuff you know mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it is i i get it i'm and i'm there I've, I've had games where it was a chore to check them and i've had games where i yeah. checked it every day so yeah Depends on the games. I oh. am not that GM. I'm just yeah. gonna be honest yeah. about that. There you go. See, that, that's my what do you remember about last time? <laughs> cool. Cool. That, oh yeah, that did happen. That did, yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. My way is. Oh, you don't remember what happened? Good, because I yeah. don't either. I'm gonna make it either. up. Yeah. You're gonna just carry on. But uh, that's why I yeah. do one shots. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I forgot the the last part of why I was bringing up the the realities broken and Fiero. It, it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you say it, I'm yeah. like, here uh, we are, who already died and bleeding. <laughs> Sorry, this uh, is a wicked, a wicked yeah. like, jump uh, in. Yeah. I just want to point hand? out that for this particular conversation, I am not the reason I'm rambling. <laughs> so, you know, anyway, but what I was going to bring up was that, uh, so you make it really hard for me to keep track. Oh, the putting things in there. Uh, like if you're putting secret notes or not secret notes, but if you're putting notes and stuff and background information in that, uh, in that, whatever you're using, make sure you tie it into the game. The people who have read it will recognize it and they'll be like, Oh my God. Oh, it's that thing you were talking about. And the others who don't get into it are like, Oh wait, what is this now? Is there, I'm missing something that if you really want to draw people in, uh, like make make people think that they're missing secrets because they will you know, want to like you just oh I'm gonna check me. them every time now you just reminded me that Stu occasionally would put down his notes into these things and he would drop GM secrets he thought he told us oh <laughs> or like or clarify things that we didn't know I'm like oh so sometimes it yeah. behooves you to read the GM notes because you might glean more information yeah yeah and you were upset at me for using the word need when he's like. Put the homework in the secret <laughs> doc, and then that's the I, only way to get it. I, I was gonna, I got tired of correcting it. It's I'm just, just it's like, you know, homework and need. And, yeah. I know. Yeah. It's fine. All right. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Thank you for joining us for season 30, episode 15 of the Happy Jacks RPG podcast. Um, thank you to our chat mod, James V. And thank you to all our amazing Patreons who keep us ad-free and independent. We all appreciate the lack of ads on the show. <laughs> and my name is Kimmy. I'm Stork. And I'm Adam. And yeah, thank you again to all the amazing people who are putting on JackerCon right now. They're in games right now. And you can find I can see them in the Discord. In I'm the sorry. Discord. I was just gonna say you can yeah. check yeah. it out on the Discord. Yeah, happyjacks.org slash JC has the link to the Discord. And there are a few games that still have openings for players. So if you ended up with some free time this weekend, ready go. Not Dacord. But Discord. Yeah, Discord, yeah. And there's games. Thank you. It's such what a about dad joke. Cord? <laughs> <Yeah. Outer> cord? <laughs> dad or cord? Yeah, there's games uh, tonight, which is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and like a lot of different time zones. So, and today we are going to be leaving you with a song. We are going to be playing Baltimore Fire by the Net Busker Folk Shop, which is Stu's fun little project that he abandoned us for oh um, way to sell it it's oh fun. uh so you can find that at <laughs> netbusker.net it's actually and very cool he takes a whole tune and he deep he explores its origins and everything and he he composes a whole song around around this you know folk tune that he found it's neat oh, it's really cool. neat. it's very I learned cool. a lot and it got me to be in charge of this so i am i'm in favor yeah. <laughs> all right we will see you all next week thank you thanks bye I, uh... It was on a silver fall by an arrow That I heard the cry I ever will remember The fire sent and cast its burning embers On another faded city of our land Fire, fire, I heard the cry From every breeze that passes by All the world was one sad cry of pity Strong men in anguish prayed, calling loud to heaven for aid. While the fire in ruin was laying fair in Baltimore, the beautiful city. Fire, fire.
cry from every breeze that passes by. All the world was one sad cry of pity. Strong men in anguish prayed, calling loud to help for aid. While the fire in ruin was laid, fair Baltimore, the beautiful city. Amid an awful struggle of commotion, the wind blew a gale from the ocean. Great firemen struggled with devotion, but their efforts all proved in vain. Fire, fire, I heard the cry from every breeze that passes by. All the world was one sad cry of pity. Strong men in anguish prayed, calling loud to him for aid. While the fire in ruin was laying fair, Baltimore, the beautiful city.